Our dearest viewers from across the world, our most sincere felicitations to each and every one of you upon the birth anniversary of our dear awaited saviour, the great, great, great grandson of the final messenger and indeed the one who will avenge the death of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, none other than Imam al Mahdi, Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu al Sharif. And inshallah, we begin today's show with this following dua in his honor and in his allegiance. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Allahumma kun li waliyik ya al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا عدتا تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Oh Allah, send your peace, your blessings and our salutations upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad and hasten the reappearance of Imam Al-Qa'im and distance us from those who showed enmity towards Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Dear viewers, you may have joined us around 15 minutes ago and our most sincere apologies for the technical difficulties. Despite the amount of investment, sometimes technical difficulties can overcome. So forgive us for our shortcomings, but we are back. Alhamdulillah. And of course, you've just heard the voice of my dear guest today, Sayyid Ali al Hakim. Salam alaikum. Salam rahmatullah. Uh, we're not going to be formal and say welcome to the show, etc. This is your home, of course, and you know you're you're one of the brothers here. And you've travelled down from Manchester, the land far, far away that no one ever knows of, of course. No, only kidding. Um, and you've come to join us. You've come to join us to celebrate the birth of the awaited Savior. And I just wanted to start very generically. When you were younger, and your parents would say that name. Imam al Mahdi, Imam al Mahdi, Imam al Mahdi. What did it mean to you guys in your family? So for us, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I'd like to thank our uh, dear brothers with Imam Hussain TV for inviting us for this show. Inshallah, may Allah bless them all. The name Imam al Mahdi, when we were younger and other brothers and sisters when we were in the mosque, the name was simply just uh, a mere symbol of a savior. Uh, symbol, okay. And a, a salvation for all. Of course, the details of how this will happen and what's going on, it was it was uh, a mere misc and blur. But as we grew older, mm. we came to understand that in time, the time scale, something will happen eventually. And it's quite hard to understand when you're younger that something has been written already yeah. in a time scale, yet you're not in that time scale just yet. Mm. But... It's, it gave a, a sense of uh, satisfaction that uh, although we see the corruption in the world and what's happening, there will be some form of justice to avenge those ones who were, were given injustice. It's like an element of hope. No, of I course. Think. Yeah, and I think it, that name, when, when it was mentioned to, to us as children, again, it's that, that notion of despite oppression, despite hatred in the world, despite how far we've gone from perfection in the time when the Prophet was delivering the message, to where we are now, kind of we've deviated so far away from a perfect household that this man is there in the wings waiting mm. and waiting patiently mm. and hurt more than we mm. are and that symbol of hope for the Shia of Ali ibn mm. Abi Talib that he will have arrived mm. inshallah. I would give you is to give you a bit of a flavor as to what today is going to be about. You may have joined us last week uh, when we were celebrating the birth anniversaries of the kings of Karbala alayhim as -salam. And we were quite informal, but our goal was very simple. And it was to rejuvenate that love and emotion and connection with Ali Muhammad within you. And of course, today we'd like to do the same, but 
with our dear awaited Savior. So we'll do this by sharing a few ahadith, a few narrations with you about him in different aspects. Sayyid will deliver some poetry written by various poets from across the lands. And again, our goal is to connect. But during the show, to get you guys involved, we do have a quiz for you guys to partake in. We would love you to partake in. And if you win it, there is uh, this absolutely beautiful canvas. Inshallah, one of the cameramen can try and get this on shot. Um, it's a beautiful picture, a canvas of the qabr, of the shrine of Imam al-Hussein in Karbala. So please do take part. And to give you the number, be ready to take it down. I'll reiterate it in the, in the show. It's if you're in the UK, plus four four zero two zero three. 5150199 so just to reiterate that it's 0203 5150199 a mixture of questions it's all for a bit of a laugh and inshallah something educational as well Sayyid, i want to start with uh, a hadith inshallah with your permission and this is regarding the name of imam al mahdi alayhi salam ta'ala farajul sharif where we kind of you know many different titles attributed to him and in the quiz that's one of, the, uh, one of the questions, we won't give it away. But there's something really beautiful where Imam al-Sadiq was mm-hmm. asked the reason for the Qa'im being named al-Mahdi. Mm. So the Holy Sixth Imam was asked what the reason was for our way to Savior being named al-Mahdi, meaning the guided. And he said, because verily he is guided to every hidden issue. Mm. And I really believe if there's one thing that we take away from today, it's this, that... Because verily he is guided to every hidden issue, be that your personal issue, be that a family issue, be that a financial issue, be that a worldly issue, corruption. Verily he is guided to every hidden issue. And that's that symbol. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's with, with this situation, when people do go through hardships in their life, naturally one would turn to a higher power, regardless mm. of faith or anything like that. So with, when they go to a higher power, they're asking for a higher power for some form of help, yes. intercession, something like that. And sometimes they don't get what they hope for and they become pessimistic in towards this higher power and they worry they worry they yeah. get anxious they, they stress and this is like an endless cycle that literally can go on for years or towards the end of their life mm. um but the way that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works through the ahlul bayt is he either gives you it delays it or provides you something better I said. um and through the Ahlul Bayt, for example, through Imam Al Mahdi Ajallah Faraj al Sharif, it makes it that much easier to achieve what you want to achieve, be it one way or another, mm. but still achieve the end goal. And it's something beautiful that we are blessed, those who um, have come to understand who the Ahlul Bayt are. Yeah. Um, they are blessed to understand that these individuals really are in intercession, both in this life and the afterlife, just to make our lives easier. So it really is a blessing. Ahsent. And it's, it's, it's a name that we look up to, it's a, it's a name that we celebrate, mm. and it's quite apt that mm. this day comes 15 days before the start of the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Shah Ramadan. It's mm. from tonight, where if our preparation hasn't already begun in the mm. holy month of Rajab, then mm. tonight we have a 15 day countdown. Mm. You know, to say, you know what, Imam, I know you're looking at every single small good and bad that I'm doing. Mm. I know you're even looking at the neutral, the mubah that I'm doing. And tonight's that pledge, you know, 15 days, I can start getting into a positive habit, I can get rid of a negative habit that I may mm. have. And inshallah, then in Shah Ramadan, I'm not kind of wasting the first 15. Instead, I'm 15 days ahead already. Excellent. No, I yes. sent him Jazakumullah Khair Jazak. That's it. Through the A'mal, through the mental preparation, as well mm. as, of course, for Ramadan and the preparation for that, this could be some sort of starting the point. catalyst. That's it. And inshallah, through these nights, we do many things. A'mal, we also do. Um, salad, dhikr, charity and mm. part of what we've got prepared today is um, different pieces of poetry Yes. Um, linking into what you said about um, what we were saying about the intercession mm. we have these brothers um, Sayyid Ahmed and Kazim Hussein from uh, Texas Texas? Texas we they, have Shias in Texas we're learning something shukur. new every day Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah they've got a good community Fantastic. a thriving community and they are poets Mashallah. Who um, have come through the, to the TV channels and come understanding that there are ways to serve the Ahlul Bayt um, through poetry. And they've written a piece here today. And this is more of a piece which um, comes in asking and saying what will happen when the Imam Al Mahdi will come. Inshallah. So, inshallah, we will we'll recite some of the pieces that they've wrote. 
When he comes, oh my master. You hear and you see by the will of the Almighty I have cried upon you for help Please listen to my plea You tell us that if we were to know all of for us we would die Oh master without you when was i ever alive Allah. and the sun moves across the sky searching for you it's burns in the summer's longing to shine for you oh imam oh imam the oppressors fear your imminent return to mm. us for they shall again witness the valor of ali and abbas oh, the world shall be drowning in the sea of ignorance the likes of which None have ever witnessed then a saviour more beautiful than all shall rise. Mm. He shall bring back to life humanity as it slowly dies. Mm. O oh Master, you shall return to cleanse this earth of tyranny. Who better to do this than the one whose embodiment is purity? Allah, Your status be such that you were the peace that consoles Zainab bint Ali. Allah. And indeed, tragedy struck Islam on the plains of Karbala. Yet when asked Zainab would say nothing but beauty, beauty. I saw. It is because you are the beauty she had seen. Allah. You are the one that shall revive your grandfather's great mm. deen. I'm praying for your return is an honor by Allah For none just anyone deserves to see the great Hujjah Sulaiman shall be in awe at the greatness of your kingdom Prophet Khidr shall see from you the pearls of wisdom In your blessed beginning united are the east and west you shall return the rights of every oppressed None will have the courage to rule and contest this world This world, be it a prison by your hand, shall become blessed This we have in a request for the uh, from the, the Sayyids that there's uh -huh. a lady that they know, Sayyida Zainab Naqvi, her health is quite poor and she'll be having a heart operation mm. She's only four years old, she'll be having a heart yeah, operation Allah. on uh, later this week so if we can ask the dear brothers and sisters to make a du'a for her for a fast recovery, inshallah. Inshallah, through the intercession of Imam Al-Qa'im and through the intercession of Imam Al-Sajjad, Marif Karbala, may Allah uh, uh, enable her to make a speedy recovery, inshallah. And such a beautiful line within there, alluding to say the Zainab alayhi salam, Ya lifarat al Hussein, and we await the one who will avenge the blood of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We do have our first caller on the line who wanted to give the quiz a go, so I'm honored to ask and say, Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, and welcome to the show, our dear brother. Ahsentum, thank you so much for joining. What is your name, and which part of the world are you calling us from? My, uh, my name is um, Minhal Khafaji. I'm calling from London. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the whole Ummah on the birth of uh, Imam Al Mahdi Hajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajah al Sharif. Ahsent. And may Allah bless you and your family and our sincere congratulations from all of us here to you, dear brother Minhal. Are you ready to. Ah, and I, did you say you were from London? Yes, yes. Amazing, amazing. Cool. Um, are you ready to take the quiz? Inshallah, inshallah. Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, are you certain? <laughs> yeah. Inshallah. Okay, here we go. So it's five questions and we'll get going, inshallah. I don't think there's a time limit, so you know, 
but you know, maybe five seconds. I don't know. You, yeah. when, when say things are taking too long, you can, you can no, say inshallah. No, inshallah. So first question: oh, yeah, When is Imam Al Mahdi's birthday? Fifteenth of Sha'ban. Correct, Marshall. Oh no, I shouldn't tell you if you've got the answer right. You know, you'll find that at the end of the show. It's <laughs> one of those. Uh, second question: Who does Zlatan Ibrahimovic play for? <laughs> LA Galaxy. <laughs> LA Galaxy. Okay, interesting answer. What is the name of our holy twelfth Imam's father? Imam Hassan al Askari. Okay, okay. And what is the capital city of Mexico? Uh, Mexico City? You'll find out a little bit later. I'm not gonna, I mean, Google's quite powerful, but hopefully you won't cheat. No, no, um, no. <laughs> no, no, no <laughs> and the final question for you is where was Imam al Mahdi born? Samarra. Uh, I can't say whether you've done all the questions correctly or not, but I, I think there's a decent feeling. Inshallah, you'll find out at the end of the show if you've won. Brother Minhal, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much. Thank and you very much. No, not at all. Remember us in your prayers, Inshallah. Take care, fear, man. Um, so, with that, I, I wanted to uh, continue a little bit of what, what we were discussing, and mm. this was to actually bring in the grandmother of our holy 12th Imam, inshallah, say the Fatima the Zahra, Mawlati Zahra alayhi salam. And one of her beautiful titles, as we are aware, is Al Mubarakah, mm. coming from the one who is given abundance. Sure. Um, and kind of just to give it a very basic understanding behind that, you know, very, very superficial level for all I know, which is, of course, the holy prophet was teased as mm. Abtar, the one who, whose lineage was cut. Sure. And through Sayyid Fatima salam, he was bestowed kawthar, an abundance, a mubarakah, um, an everlasting flow of sadats and sayyids. And alhamdulillah, we have one here to testify. There we go, mashaAllah. So, I wanted to narrate this hadith, inshallah, which the Holy Prophet says, Glad tidings to you, O Fatima, for verily the Mahdi will mm. be from you, i.e. from your descent. And we have many of these ahadith, in fact, where the Holy Prophet alludes to this coming from off his grand great 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 grandson that will come mm. and rule the earth. So, just in very in very simple kind of words, very clear evidence from the Holy Prophet alluding uh, from Fatima Zahra salam alayha that this incredible personality would would come from. Um, I want to touch again on that poem. Actually, mm. there was a line in there. If you if you if you can bring it up, mm, sure. Where it, it it mentioned about Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. Sure, yeah, I mean, it was linking um, Abu Fadl Abbas and Imam Ali, mm. um, alayhim was salam, just through a poetic uh, joining, and he says, O oh, Imam, the oppressors fear your imminence return to us, for they shall again witness the valor of Ali and Abbas, Allah. the power of these two individuals, and that, that was displayed many years ago, was something very unique and yeah. iconic. Um, a lot of movies you see... Um, uh, Hollywood movies and things like that, they, ba they base some of these courageous acts and it, a lot of people say actually these stem from certain uh, individuals and we, but this is the actual reality of what happened mm. uh, but it's not just through their strength, it's through their actions in their life and how, how they acted. It's the, it's the scholarly nature of Imam Ali alayhi salam obviously we're all very familiar with when you go to Kufa mm. and you know, you know that's the location where he passed down judgments etc. It's that mm. same scholarly level that no doubt mm. we'll see in Imam Al Qa'im, that same ability to, you know, communicate to the mm. masses and make them realize what a what an incredible man, you know, this is that's before it would us. Be something uh, not not seen by the world. They, they say in the ahadith when the Imam does reappear, it will be a time where you can see him when he is not here, mm. or, or when 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 you when you're not with him. So, for example, now there's technology, there's TV, so you can see him, but you're not literally present with yeah. him. So. Clearly, th there are indications um, that something is building up um, and certain things that are going around the world and the incidences and the tragedies that are happening around mm. the world just are all indicators that, you know, time, time is coming close. Of course, we can't pinpoint a date of when the Imam will arrive, mm. but there are indications. But the, with these things, we can only reflect um, upon ourselves and what we have done um, as a community, as a world and in preparation, a humanitarian and how are we... Um, working together for the betterment of mankind mm. and um, there's a dear brother um, Sayyid Saeed Al-Hakim he's written a poem um, he was he's speaking um, apologizing to the Imam okay uh, and, he, and he reflects about what's happening in this world and this is a spoken word piece Inshallah, um, so he says I'm sorry but what can I do 
I'm sorry, but what can I do? Is it you waiting for me or am I waiting for you? Mm. I feel cold and I shiver, a cold that goes beyond the skin, deep it furls and unfurls, its fingers seeping into my pores, to my bones, to my core, to my soul. It's a cold you can't shake, a feeling you can't break, but there's a small warmth, a kind of presence I feel that reaches deep. Mm. Like a blanket, it envelops and it's the sun behind the cloud. I feel it, I feel you, your presence guiding from afar. And it melts the icicles that have formed in my heart and fills me with a content full of bliss. And now invasion after invasion, is this our history to colonize or be colonized? Ruthless, simple, smart, ingenious and strategy have a crisis to make the people afraid. People that are afraid are easier to manipulate, follow the money. The green blinds causing rivers of red. Mm. It's just controlled hysteria and we're seeing it again in Syria. A reason now to continue increasing their numbers. It's all a bit too convenient, one wonders. Mm. And now even amongst our Shi'as, we have become extreme. We are the oppressed and what do I see? Don't be asleep. Oh Imam, I'm sorry, but I feel lost. New leaders keep appearing and they prey on emotions, they prey on the weak and all around me I see a difficult way of life. Every day I question the choices I make, maybe I'm wrong and what I see on TV is right. So appealing their lifestyle so glamorous, but I don't see the beauty, rather the lack of fundamentals. I don't, I don't see how superficial chasing pleasures are. Oh Imam, I am sorry. Oh Imam, I am sorry. Ahsant. Ahsant. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala. It's, it's, it's quite, yeah, it's, it's quite touching, you know, mm. to hear some it. It's, it's a frustration I think that many people hold and, mm. you know, atheists especially will come up with that argument of saying, if this God of yours is so merciful mm. and so loving, why is it that there's so much oppressionism in the mm. world? Why is it that almost every country in the Middle East has gone through at least... 10 civilian deaths mm. you know through through money paid by taxpayers in the west like why why is this happening and it's really about trying to understand the difficulty and the oppression of the world right now and the mercy of allah and trying to fathom that really takes a lot of iman mm. and strength and again i, I and i just just to the viewers i, I want to point you towards this book inshallah because maybe last week you saw me referring to this um, this is a book called the scale of wisdom um al mizan al hikmah and very simply, it's just a huge compilation of ahadith from the A'imma So if you have a topic like jealousy, mm. there's hadith. If you have a topic about friendship, mm. there's hadith. If you, if you feel you're going through depression, there's hadith. If you want to know about the proof of a certain imam, there's hadith. And it's just a nice kind of like encyclopedia that we mm. can always refer to. Mm. And again, why do I say this? Because there is a hadith in here from Imam Sajjad salam, where he talks about... Uh, the difficulty for the Shia whilst they're waiting um, and kind of the reward for them for having mm. that patience within them. Mm. So he says, Imam Sajjad he says, When our Qa'im will rise, Allah will remove all defects from our Shia. SubhanAllah. Powerful. Mm. When Al Qa'im rises, Allah will remove all defects from our Shia. He will make their hearts like pieces of iron and he will make the strength of a man from among them equal to the strength of 40 Forty. men. Mm. They will be the rulers and chiefs of the earth. And you know, there's obviously a lot of poetic license in sure. this, no doubt, or you know, trying, the Imam trying mm. to paint some imagery to us. But at the same time, there's a level of patience and reward that comes with this, that those Shia mm. who every Thursday night, and you know, we've seen the pictures of Masjid Jamkaran in, mm. in Iran where you see them yearning, you know, Alhamdulillah, I was there in mm. last April and we, we went on Tuesday night and that you could sense a yearning for this man that people longed mm. for and craved for and could even smell to an extent. Awesome. And they were there reciting du'a to us and when you got to the uh, part of the 12th Imam, mm. you know, that roar and that eruption and it's, it's that soul within the Shia that we want to awaken, inshallah. Um, and I find, you know, especially on this night, this 15th of Sha'ban, where, of course, we celebrate, we enjoy ourselves, but at the same time, we reflect and we say, if Imam were to be here tomorrow, 
did I make the cut? Mm. You know, football trials. Did I really put the effort in? Mm. Did I make the cut? Is coach going to pick me for the, you know, the first 11 on Sunday or mm. have I fallen short? It depends yeah. which team, I suppose. Depends which team, of yeah. course. There you go. Mm. Um, any more poems for us, say? Yeah, Charlotte? sure. You've, you've I mean, just linking nice. in to that sheer power and when you were saying about when the uh, Imam will rise and mm. you'll have a leader, Linking it into the whole concept of leadership, we mm. have a poem uh, written by our dear brother Sadiq Damani um, and um, it goes by the title of Our Leader, Our Leader, The Shining Star, Our Leader and it just, it's more of us calling for the Imam, asking for him his leadership which is so required in this day Inshallah. and age. And Inshallah. just before you recite it I'm afraid, there's no, a cliffhanger no. because we no. have a call and okay, we don't want to no, leave him sure. waiting with your permission Inshallah. Bismillah. So uh, we turn to the call, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear sister, thank you so much for joining us. May you share your name and where you are also calling from. Um, so, thank you very much for having me. Um, my mm -hmm. name is Umm al mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm calling from London. Lovely to have you on the show and our deepest congratulations to you and your family on the birth of our dear awaited saviour. Are you doing anything special uh, on this night? <laughs> Well, do you know what? Actually, I'm just sitting on my prayer rug, just reciting du'as for everyone. Alhamdulillah, it's Inshallah. a really blessed night. Inshallah. Please pray, especially for those uh, Shia or non-Shia who are oppressed across the world um, in need yeah. of, of your du'as. Um, on a lighter note, are you uh, ready to take the quiz? Yes, I'm ready, Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, so five questions again. We won't have a, a time limit. Say, perhaps you can ask the first question. Sure. Um, so the first question is, what is the name of Imam Mahdi's uh, mum's name? The mother of Imam Al Mahdi. Yes, mother. Yes. Um, Sayyidah Narjis alayhi salam. Uh, we can't tell you if it's correct or not. We have to just keep a, you know, kind of like that blank face. Just sure. Looks stern. <laughs> um, okay. Second question: Vladimir Putin is the leader of which country? Russia. Okay. Sayyid. Um, where will Imam Mahdi make the capital of his Khalifa? Kufa. Not London. <laughs> or Manchester. No, I'm not, no, no, no Allah, London's not worthy. Oh my, <laughs> God. oh my God, okay, fair enough. Okay, the Den is the home of which English football club? Can you repeat that, sorry? Sure. So, the Den, the Den is the home of which English football club? Oh, subhanAllah, I have no idea. Okay. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say Arsenal. Okay, okay. <laughs> it, it's actually, it's a football club that are uh, uh, slightly hostile, though I've enjoyed my visits there in the past. But in any case, say it, last question, and shall And the last question, name one of Imam Mahdi's titles. Quite a straightforward one. Okay, um, so he is... Um, Al-Qaim, um, al mm. so like the one that will arise as such from Ali Muhammad. Definitely. Dear sister, thank you so much for joining thank us. May you. Allah accept your a'mal and your family's a'mal on this night. And you'll find out towards the end of the show if you'll be receiving this beautiful canvas, inshallah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Sayyid, you were about to give us an ashid about leadership <coughs> uh, towards Imam al-Mahdi. <coughs> so I leave it to you. Our leader, our leader, the shining star, our leader, I call out for some help, you come to me yourself, I call out for some help, you come to me yourself, you never leave me be, you're there when I'm in need, I'm in need, never leave me. Never leave me, stay by my side, never leave me. Our leader, our leader, the shining star, our leader. I'll serve you till the end of time when I'll defend. I'll serve you till the end of time when I'll defend under your truth. Her mind like a father and child and his child at your service at your service till my last breath at your service 
Please quickly reappear. The earth is full of fear. Please quickly reappear. The earth is full of fear. We really need you here. Our prayers, please do hear. Please do hear. Please don't delay. Please don't delay. Not even one day. Please don't delay. Our leader. Our our leader, the shining star, our leader, the twelfth glimmer of hope, of stable steadfast rope, the twelfth glimmer of hope, of stable steadfast rope, that takes us to Allah, from us never be far, never be far, let me hold on, let me hold on, please don't let go. Go, let me hold on for how many more days until your name displays for how many more days until your name displays across the sky's blue maze replacing the sun's rays the sun's rays your pure beauty your pure beauty my eyes await your pure beauty our leader, our leader, the shining star, our leader. Ahsantum jazakum Allah khair al jaza. Our leader, our leader, the shining star, our leader, our dear awaited Savior. May Allah <coughs> hasten his reappearance. Our dear viewers, we'll be back in just a few minutes so you can go grab your tea, your coffee, whatever it is. And inshallah, we'll see you very briefly after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Our dearest viewers, inshallah, you had enough time to just get that second sugar in your tea because, you know, you're allowed to be a little bit festive on this evening. Um, Whilst we welcome you back, I wanted to uh, divert our attention, inshallah, towards Dua Al-Ahad. Mm -hmm. um, a Dua recommended to recite after uh, Fajr prayers in the morning. A Dua that is said that if you recite it for 40 consecutive mornings after your Fajr prayer, mm -hmm. then you'll have the opportunity to meet the Imam in person. Um, and there's, in, you know, the, the, the Dua is in, in, it just incredible. It's, it's, it's beautiful. But I wanted to share just a couple of... Uh, Parts of it, if, if I may. Um, two parts. So the first is the bit where it starts with Allahumma inni ujaddilu lahu fi sabihata yawmi hadha. So this part it says, O oh Allah, renew for him my covenant. Mm. And look at the power of this line. Mm. Renew for him my covenant. Pledge an allegiance on my neck in the morning of this day of mine. And whatever days of my life I live, I shall never turn away from it, nor let it ever vanish. SubhanAllah. I mean, SubhanAllah. you know, <laughs> there's getting a tattoo and people say that's dedication. You know, mm. this is pledge, stick this allegiance on my neck yeah. every morning, whatever days I've got remaining, mm. and I'll never turn away from it, nor, let, nor ever let it vanish. No wonder why if you say it for 40 days, you know, it means yeah. something. That's... You know, one powerful part of that. Second part, and again, it's it's the exact preceding, uh, the following parts, which starts with Allahumma ja'alni min ansari wa awani wa dhabina an wal musara'ina ilayhi. Um, so this part talks about, it says, Oh Allah, appoint me among his helpers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh Allah, appoint me among his mm -hmm. helpers, his aides and his protectors. Mm -hmm. And this part is fascinating. So... Before I say this part, you know, you, you've got an older brother, I've got an older brother, right? When your mom says, you know, Ali, come on, it's food time. You know, can you help me chop the tomatoes? Yeah. D do we race to go and, you know, chop the tomatoes? You know, I don't know if we race there, you know, but we'll go eventually, right? He says, oh Allah, appoint me among his helpers, aides and protectors. Those who hasten mm. to fulfill his commands and obey his orders. Sure. 
not just those who mm. fulfill his commands and those who just obey his orders, those sure. who hasten to go and do it. Just with that point, mm. just in terms of hastening and wanting to do activities in nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> any act that um, is helping mankind or making the embetterment of mankind, mm. even for example, helping somebody um, walk across the street or work or otherwise, even your work, if your intention of working is for the satisfactory of satisfying your family, mm. um, raising a family or just, you know, you're going to be paying hummus, for example, or even just uh, so to sustain your, uh, your living. Yeah. Allah prefers this individual um, so highly and Allah understands that, you know, Especially in this day and age living in the West and the struggles that we go through Allah takes everything into consideration I personally feel that sometimes people go very hard on themselves Some mm. people go very hard on themselves and it sometimes has a negative effect as opposed to a positive effect But with these du'as it makes us you know brings brings us so closer to Allah and within these du'as Sometimes we find that the mercy of Allah is so large mm. and it's, un it's not you can't compare it yeah uh, sometimes people say that oh but god's not going to forgive me for that that's really we shouldn't say that we should always say that okay we've made a mistake let's acknowledge it obviously maybe get up upset about it but then move on and then rectify from our mistakes mm. But it's through through du'as like these, it's that, that bond. You seek inspiration, right? Inspiration. Yeah. But if we read it with, with, with passion and actual understanding throughout mm. these 40 days, it really does make a bind with us and inshallah the imam. And inshallah. that's how we can inshallah join him. Inshallah. And just uh, entirely agreeing just to finish this, this part. So after saying those who hasten to fulfill his commands and obey his orders, it mm. ends this, this, this uh, part, if you like, by sure. saying... Those who are his supporters and compete with each other to fulfill his intention mm. and seek martyrdom in his presence. Those mm. who compete with each other. I suppose me we're competing it. today, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. You know, I, I, I say this not from someone who has been able to recite this after 40 consecutive mornings, mm. but just, you know, when you do have the moment to, mm. you know, take time out, connect with it mm. in that time where, you know, Darkness is amongst you and the light is solely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's mm. beautiful. We do have a caller on the line, inshallah. So we welcome you to the show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Our deepest congratulations to you and your family you. on this suspicious occasion. May I ask for your name and where you're calling from? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ahmed. Call you say Amir. Ahmed. Ahmed. Calling from? Cardiff. Cardiff. Okay, from yeah. Wales. How is it going in Wales? It's all right. Cool. I just realized how terrible a question that is. It's like saying, how's it going in England? <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, it's a very prominent community in uh, Cardiff. Very Cardiff, good. yeah. yeah. It's very good, very good activity yeah. for the service of Imam al-Mahdi, Al Ajallah Faraj al-Sharif. There isn't much, but it's all right. Yeah. No, no, don't be harsh on yourself. You're the, doing excellent. The, 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 the youth group in Newport is called Khuddam al-Mahdi. Khuddam al-Mahdi, that's, that's, your basis is very strong. You guys are actually pioneering some of the activities within the UK. Ah, yes, yes. Inshallah. Um, may I ask what's kind of like what's on the festivities for you during tonight and for this week? Uh, you know, the the festivities of Shaban, Shawwat. Inshallah. And the Amal. Inshallah. Enjoy it. Yes. And uh, thank you. Uh, buy your family some, some, some sweet gifts and they'll, they'll thank you. I will do. I will do. <laughs> awesome. Are you ready to take the quiz? Yes, I am. I'm making it sound as if it's who wants to be a millionaire, but it's who wants to be, I don't know, like a, <laughs> a, a, an attendee yeah. of, of, I don't know. It's anyway. enough to be on the show. There we go, inshallah. So we'll get started today, please, with, uh, maybe we'll do the third set of questions. So inshallah, uh, please begin. Sure. So um, how old was Imam al-Mahdi, Ajallah Faraj al-Sharif, when he went into the minor occultation? Um, five years old, I believe. Interesting. Um, this second question, uh, when, we, when we got them before the show, I was like, you know, how is anyone going to answer this? But actually, it's quite pertinent to where you're from. So, what food is known as a Welsh rabbit? Oh, come on, man. Uh, that's cheese on toast. Okay. <laughs> Say and um, Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi resides in which area? Uh, oh. Okay. Um, there's a beautiful acronym for this one. How many colours are there 
in a rainbow. In a rainbow. If, if you didn't learn the song Seven. of childhood. Ah, sense. <laughs> Okay. You're not meant to tell me. Oh yeah, sense. sorry, I'm not meant to say. You can't say this. This is meant to Stern be all, Stern face. This is meant to be an occultation about the answers. <laughs> How old was the Imam when he went into the major occultation? Fifty. Um, okay. Well, are you on Google? <laughs> no. Are you sure? <laughs> yep. Oh, okay. Dear brother, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you'll you. find out. Send so not at all. You'll find out towards and the end right. of the show if you've uh, if you've managed you, to win. Not at all. Ma salam. Take care. Um, you know, one of the one of the beautiful things I find about uh, the Aim Ali Imam, especially mm. the Aim towards our uh, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh, and of course our, our twelfth Imam is mm. the ages at which they took up Imam. Mm. You know, we're talking from single digits to early teens, mm. um, and it's it's. You know, especially when we look at Karbala, we have 10 days where you know, they'll say, for those mm. of you who are age 13, mm. picture yourself versus Al-Qasim alayhisam. For those of you <coughs> aged 5, 4, picture yourself against mm. Sayyid al-Ruqayya. For those of you aged, you know, uh, late teens or early 20s, mm. Ali and Al-Akbar. And it's, you know, I think we should do that a little bit more across the year as well. Because sure. when you hear that an imam has taken imam in their teens, mm. You know, we're not talking, you know, yeah. they've become a captain, they've become the imam. It's, 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 it's something amazing. I mean, when I heard that Fatima Zahra, um, peace be upon her, died at the age of 18, mm. was, was martyred at the age of 18, I was astounded because when I found that out, you know, I was quite at a young age and I'm like, this is, this is very confusing to me. How can a lady of such a young age it's achieved accomplished so, so much. much. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ajeeb, but just to do this, yani it's, it's remarkable. And the way that, you know, us individuals um, in this day and age, in this era, um, some people say, but I find it strange to praise or to uh, commemorate an individual that I've never met. Mm. Mm. It's a strange thing to do. But once we learn about these individuals and read about them, we have a bond that's special to them. And from that, we start, you know, understanding and researching about them. And this bond becomes stronger and stronger. Definitely. And once we acknowledge how great these individuals are, we begin to praise them. Definitely. And we have a, a poet, poem written here today in praise of um, Imam al-Mahdi on this occasion by Sayyidah Fatima al-Hakim. Um, and it goes as follows. Habibullah, 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 Hujjatullah, Habibullah, 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 Hujjatullah, you are the light that we need in the dark against this world's tides. You still the hope arc when we're lost we follow you the twelfth star to us you're so close yet yeah, from us you were far Mahdi to you we raise our arms our arms our arms please do Accept our salam, salam, salam. Habibullah, 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 Hujjatullah, Habibullah, 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 Hujjatullah. Are you are now in your long ago? Cultation, but for peace, you truly have a vision. Mm. We stay hopeful to 
ya aiden ya mission for this we pray to god for permission to be in your army a dream a dream a dream inshallah for all all though from us for this the same the same the same habibullah 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 hujjatullah habibullah 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 hujjatullah you did disappear in samara when will you return o son of zahra from amongst the lights you are the last spark lighting communities from the very start so loved one to us please now return 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 in our hearts your name is now written 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 habibullah 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 hujjatullah habibullah 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 Hujjatullah In Ziyara We must utter One request That with you In the following We're blessed For without you Our tears will not rest Your long with patience is our big test let your reappearance now hasten 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 for without you joy is taken 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 Habibullah 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 Hujjah Allah, Habibullah, 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 Hujjatullah. Patiently we wait for that blessed Friday mm. when behind you two together we can all pray Inshallah. for this together out loud let us now say Allah return to us our man we want to be with our loved one loved one whose nur is greater than the grandson the son the son Habibullah 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 Hujjatullah Habibullah 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 Hujjatullah We try to be the best that we all can During difficulty we all stay calm We try to do only good and no harm so that we can be with our imam. Ya Mahdi, you do hear 
I will call, I will call, I will call So please do save us when we fall, we fall, we fall Habibullah, Habibullah, Habibullah Hujjatullah, Habibullah, Habibullah, Habibullah Hujjatullah Sent Allah اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعنا أداءهم أحسنتم and you know I just wanna you, you mentioned about those patiently waiting and waiting and waiting and the ansar of the imam the helpers of the imam those who will be amongst those who serve him I think it's important that we know the criteria to be amongst those what does it take or what examples do we have that tell us kind of Yes, you're going to be part of it, or no, you're not going to be part of it. So I wish to share a hadith with you, inshallah, which comes from, uh, I believe, yes. So it comes from Bihar al-Anwar, where Imam al-Sadi, alayhi salam, in describing the supporters of al-Mahdi. Mm. And I just want you guys, viewers, I want you to think, from this description, can you pinpoint any other moment within Shia history or within Islamic history where such companions were described in this way? So Imam al-Sadiq describes the supporters of Imam al-Mahdi and he says They keep regular vigils and spend the night standing in worship of Allah SubhanAllah During their prayers, their silent supplications are like the buzz of honeybees mm. They mount their horses during the daytime in line with the performance of their duties They are worshippers at night and lions during the day on account of fear of Allah, they are in a particular state. Mm. And that line specifically, where it says, where Imam Sadiq says, during their prayers, their silent supplications are like the buzz of the honeybees. Talking of the companions <laughs> of the Imam, it's quite similar mm. to when we hear the description of the companions of, of Imam Hussein mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. they say on the night of Ashura, when you went towards the tents, you heard the buzz mm. of prayers, of Qur'an, of supplication, of munajat, blah, 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 blah. It's similar. Ajib, it's, it's remarkable. They say that when uh, they went into the tents, one of the companions, and he saw people worshipping, praying, the sound of, it's like, uh, as they described with the bees and the honey, it's, it's ajib. And some of the companions actually, during uh, the nights before Ashura, some of them were actually having a good time within within themselves, as some of the hadith say. Mm. And he said, "How? Why are you having a good time? Tomorrow is a great. It's a big day. We are going into battle." And they say that they have such certainty in the afterlife. Definitely. With the reply, they said that, well, "Of course, we're happy. The next day, we're going to be next to the Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why wouldn't we be happy?" Ah, and uh, when the uh, the lecturer, the khatib, was saying these words, the audience uh, started crying. Is it mm. something ajib? The certainty that there is an Conviction. afterlife. It's, it's ajib, and inshallah, yeah. we all can be like them. Inshallah, inshallah. Um, and you know, on that note, our, our dear viewers who who called in to take part in the quiz, you can have conviction as well in winning each of you <laughs> one of these lovely canvases, inshallah. So for our three callers. These will be sent to your doorstep. So many congratulations. For those of you who fought to join in, got a little bit of cold feet, now you know how giving the channel is. So inshallah, you'll take part next time and you can receive one yourself. And as, as we come towards the end of the show, um, I want to, if, if possible, give or recite a very short stanza from uh, a very famous poet from Pakistan, um, uh, a gentleman who really revolutionized mm. and brought forward um, Urdu poetry mm. in particular within Pakistan. And as a result, due to the political tensions and sectarian tensions, he was then killed. Mm. And this is none other than Shaheed Sibti Jafar. And it's one of his most famous pieces where the kind of the core of it is where he says, um, what will we do when the Imam comes? Sure. And it's quite a tough tone. Um, and I hope it resonates, however. Mm. So he says, we talk about love day and night. Of course, it's in Urdu, and this is the translation. We talk about love day and night. Even with his enemies, we keep relations. SubhanAllah. It's 
even with Imam's enemies, mm. we keep relations despite the fact that we talk about him. Mm. We talk love day and night. So we talk about mm. love day and night, even with his enemies, we keep relations. We don't even give khums and we continue doing ghibah. In our hearts, we have hatred even for believers. How will we do our duty when the Imam comes? How will we do our duty when the Imam comes? It's, and it's to me before mm. anyone else and it's, it's powerful, it's chilling. It's yes, we've been blessed. You know, one of the biggest blessings of Allah is that we've been given the Imam alayhi wasalam and the Ahl Bayt alayhi wasalam to look up to mm. and revere. But what sort of creation neglects the gift of its creator Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And I really You know It, it sends shivers down my spine Every single time really think The whole concepts of unity The whole concepts of Not backbiting The mm. whole ideology Of the basis of Islam That sometimes we forget From our day to day lives Through these poetries And through these poets mm. Gives us a reminder That ultimately We're all in it together We're all trying to achieve The same thing as the Muslims And, 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 and the, the, the people who Try to strive to do good mm. So if there are any animosities, if there is any hatred, this is the night, inshallah, just to let go, forgive. There's no need to keep anything in your heart. Sometimes these concepts of jealousies are regarded as a disease. Mm. So let disease go. The There's soul. no need to keep it inside. Um, this is one of the nights secondary to Laylatul uh, Qadr. Mm. One of the holy nights given as a, a night of the Ahlul Bayt, mm. salam. So what are the nights for us to start cleansing ourselves, forgiving those, asking forgiveness from the people that we might have hurt, and just start gaining our spirituality, giving Inshallah. back to the community. Inshallah. I couldn't have said it any better myself. And um, as Sayyid mentioned, on this night doing A'mal is highly, highly recommended. And there's loads, loads and loads. And unfortunately, there are messages going around um, from certain schools of thought trying to uh, negate the auspicious nature and the powerful nature of this night, please don't be fooled. Look towards the plethora of ahadith that point towards how powerful this night is. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet's hadith, he's not saying, oh, just from nowhere, the 15th of Sha'ban is powerful. Of course, mm. he knew what was to come. And amongst the a'mal, I just want to share with you um, one of the parts of it where we recite Surah Yasin, the heart of Qur'an, three times. And for each time you recite it, there's a reason for it. And I just want to find the, uh, uh, I just want to remind myself. Here we go. So there's three different, three times you recite Surah Yasin on mm. this night and each one for a specific reason. Um, so if there's one thing that you can do, inshallah, dear viewers, if your time is, is of the essence, is try and do these three Yasin. And the intentions you need to have are the following. The first one is one for a long life. Mm. You recite Surah Yasim in the intention of gaining a long life, inshallah. inshallah. The second one is for prosperity. And the third one is for safety from misfortune. So just to recap, long life, prosperity and safety from misfortune. I think that third one especially, yeah. safety from misfortune, we really never know what is coming around the corner mm. from us. So dear viewers, if you do have the chance, please do engage in your amal tonight as much as you can do. I know... The nights are getting shorter and shorter, um, but please do your utmost. And with that, we start to come towards the very end of the show, mm. unfortunately. Say it's been, it's been beautiful to have you. Um, and would it be possible, inshallah, for you to end the show as you started it with our allegiance in dua to Imam Al Mahdi? Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا عتا تسكنه ورضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Our dear viewers, thank you so much for joining us on this evening Thank you, thank you so much for joining us Genuinely from the 
depths of our hearts and from all of us here at the channel, we wish you and your families a huge facilitations to you all on this birth anniversary of our dear awaited saviour. A night of power, a night of reflection, but of course, a night and inshallah, a week of celebration for you, your family and your friends. May Allah hasten the reappearance of our dear awaited saviour. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the intercession of the perfect 14. And may we be amongst those who get to serve in his revolution of those who will avenge the blood of Aba Abdullah al Hussein in Karbala. Have a very, very exciting evening in terms of your soul's journey towards the month of Allah, Shah Ramadan. And please keep everyone in your prayers from across the world. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.